Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tony and I'm building another Armatec 1-6 scale full metal tank, this time the Jag Panther 38 or the Hetzer. Um, and when we left off last time I'd assembled the four leaf springs um, and they went together really really well and Armatec I think have done an amazing job on just the working the workings out of this and the and the, the, the simple simplicity of it. Um, and I left off by talking about assembling sort of the, the bogies and the rest of the suspension because um, I really want I was keen to uh, test the suspension to see how it works. But I've changed my mind because as you always do on these builds, you continually think about the next step. Um, and it turns out if I assembled everything and put it onto the tank, I'm not going to be able to get paint to it. And I don't want to go painstakingly assembling this and then to take it off. So I've worked out a way on a different sequence of doing it. So I'm going to basically assemble, I've done two already, there's eight of these. I'm going to complete the assembly of all eight bogies. And then when they're done, I'm going to get the wheels and we're going to clean those up and we're going to assemble those as well. And I'll say, when I say assemble, there's really nothing to do. I mean, there's a bit of work to them, but in comparison to the Tiger and the M26 Pershing, it's so straightforward. There's only eight wheels and there's not a huge amount of assembly with them and there's no real fixings as such. So, um, and once they're built, um, I'll then paint. So I'm going to put a base coat of uh, primer and a base color coat. Um, I haven't fully decided what color that's going to be yet. And obviously when I get to that point, I will do that. Um, and then once they're painted, I'll then paint the lower section of the hull and, and then assemble all those components together onto the hull and then test the suspension and the wheels and see how that's all looking. Um, so that's the plan or the revised plan, as I, I should say. So what I'll do in a moment, I'll zoom in and we'll do some close up work and we'll get uh, the rest of these uh, bogies completed. Right, so we have got um, eight of these in total, left and right, um, and they are coded differently. So just be mindful of that. So all I've done is I've, I've, I've just put an M mark on, on this because the code ends in an M, ends in them, sorry. Um, and I've just positioned them as they would roughly be on the tank, um, obviously about there, um, because then the leaf spring will sit inside this. And the whole idea is that this leaf spring sits and rides on this slot here. And that's allowed, that will allow the suspension to work. So I'm, I should imagine that once these are on, these are gonna be quite loose on the tank. And then when the wheels go on, they'll be brought back up and then obviously the leaf spring will do its job. So these are done, uh, really straightforward. A couple of things. One is that this, um, this axle effectively bolt uh, doesn't actually fit very neatly into this. You do have to clean it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in my vise. Um, I'm gonna start the thread off to try and get it sort of straight, winding it in to the point that, actually that one's going in better than I thought. So these will go in that stop now. So I'll put this, I've got soft grips on my vise. Um, and I'm going to just lock that into the vise and rotate it around so that I'll get that to spin round um, and up and put in tight. And then we have a brass bush that slides in here um, and then is locked tight glued inside here. And that is what eventually uh, one of these massive big bolt screws will pass through like so. Um, but there's a little, as always, there's a little bit of cleaning up to do. So. We'll do is we'll just initially wipe off the construct or the you know the the CNC machine residue, get all of that off because that needs to be cleaned ahead of painting anyway. And then we'll go off and do we will do all six of these, and then we'll thread them. Uh, so that one's done. Let me put them in the way they should be. It doesn't really matter. I've marked these anyway. I think I've put M's on them. Yeah, I have. I know it, it seems like I constantly change my mind about how to, um, you know, to undergo these builds. But you do. That's what happens. And if you've ever built one of these, I'm sure you'd agree. You you start off with a plan, um, and obviously the instructions are there, and they're they're sort of laid out. And as again, what makes a really good, I guess, what makes sense is a bit of a sequence. But sometimes because the instructions don't cover painting um, and uh, all the rest of that, you do need to consider. So I'm glad I kind of took a break, um, stopped, had a good look, understood what, where I am with the uh, the build, 
and monix stage so to speak so soon have all these cleaned up and we will then go off and put all the other components on um, and then once i've done this as i said i'll show you the wheels and i'll show you what's involved in the wheels um, relatively straightforward however there's some sort of dummy uh, nut heads or bolt heads that have to be glued in and on the hub cup on the hub cap you're what we're going to have to do is once it's glued because they're longer than the, the if you like the thin the material is quite thin um, and the bolts are longer so once they've passed through and glued I'm going to have to get the old uh, fateful drill out and do some work on it and then um, we'll take it from there uh, that looks like I've already done that one um, I just want to say also thank you so much um, for the, the amazing comments I'm getting on this channel um, I just love the fact that uh, you guys get it you know I'm not a youtuber so, so, so to speak but um, I just love this hobby I enjoy everything about this hobby um, I never thought I'd fall in love with it as much as I have um, as I said on my one of my earlier videos that I do I do need to start thinking about how I'm gonna store all these um, if I'm going to continue building but um, not worried about that too much but I just want to say a massive thanks to everyone that's um, showing the appreciation for the hobby um, and understanding that I'm not an expert I'm just a very keen enthusiast um, and I really hope that you guys continue to follow and support what I'm doing here um, I understand that this my videos have encouraged or certainly sort of um, got people interested in the hobby um, and I'm talking directly to Armatech about doing some, you know, getting into this hobby. So they're all clean, ready to go. I think the very first thing I'm going to do is get these brass bushes in. So um, we're going to need some Loctite super glue. Um, and the way to do this is just to get it. So this has obviously got a profile on it. You want that to be flat. This needs to be flat, directly flat on the surface. And we want this bush to go in here, but oh, that's not going to work. So we're going to have to do a little bit of cleaning. So just using my deburring tool, I'm just going to clean that, that edge off. Let's see if that goes in. Yeah, that goes in there nice. Um, I will check to see if this big bolt will pass through this bush, and it does. I think that's important. Um, so that's there, it's nice and flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the super glue on one edge the outer or the one end I should say and then use gravity to do the rest but you get a little bit of time because this glue doesn't react until it comes into contact with another surface so don't panic and position that on there and then allow gravity to do its job as that. I don't know if you saw that. And then that has, that will spread the glue um, along the shaft um, and then allow that to set. So we'll do that one more time. And this one, let's see if that goes in. No, it does need a bit of cleaning up. Great tool, this deburring tool. Essential. Let's just test fit that now. Needs to needs to go in there reasonably straight for you don't want to be hammering the uh, daylights out of that so let's there you go that goes in there now I mean it's it's not as loose as the previous one but I think that's going to be fine so again what we'll do is we'll just put that on the edge put that there so you can see it put that on the edge here. I will be armed with my little mallet if this doesn't go in just to be on the safe side so again I'm just applying the glue one end because once it slides into position it will spread along that shaft so that's about right there we go gravity's done the job again so that's that one. Let's test fit this one. So 
Aprendeu? It's a very satisfying part of the build this. That's lovely, that's perfect. So again, just on the edge of the bench there. Just applying the glue to using the nozzle to spread that around. Pop that on there. That needs a little bit of encouragement. There you go. Just check that. Yeah, same again. Put a lid on that glue. I'd love to know if anybody out there has either built the Hetzer or currently building the Hetzer. So if you are watching me and you're one of my regulars and you'd like to comment, or if you, even if you're new and you, you know about the Hetzer kit and you're um, considering buying it, um, buying it, or have bought it and built it or waiting to build it, I would love to hear from you to see what experiences you had on it. Is there anything I should be aware of? Um, you know, just to share. And, I, and also, I've said on, on, on a lot of the comments that I've had if you are building any of the tanks that I've covered here, so it's only the, these, well, completed so far too, um, and you're struggling, please do contact me through the comments and I will see what I can do to help. So, just another little bit of encouragement, and that's done. Last two. takes that sharp edge off and allows that to go it allows it to move in nice and freely and typically in the UK uh, we have got diabolical weather now setting in um, and uh, it suits me perfectly so just this is a brilliant winter hobby by the way so if you're in a position to to get one of these and you're considering it and the only thing stopping you is having the, the confidence to build I really hope what I'm doing here helps there's always one and that went in lovely didn't it before so and then the last one Last one just needed a little bit of encouragement. Just saw a little bit more of that on that. Um, now I'm just going to clean this edge up. So all of those done. So we'll let those set for a minute and then we will crack on and put the axle pins in. So we'll probably start this end. So that's obviously been the longest one, set for the longest time, sorry. Um, so I'm gonna put this, let's make sure we get this at the right way and it is. So that's gonna go in this side. Just going to offer that. Turn that round, see as far as we can get in. I think that was the one I tried. So that needs to go. I'm going to come off camera, uh, just put that in the vise very quickly, just tightening up the soft grips. Okay, so that's done. Uh, that went in okay. I put a bit of thread locker in, so that's in fine. But I know when I was playing around with some of these yesterday, 
um, they're just they were just so tight I don't want to force them I mean so for instance that one is so tight that's not going to go in there so I've got an M12 tap kit and um, so I'm now going to use my M12 tap kit just to clean that hole so just gently going to load that on Not winding that in, not forcing it, so it'll find it's it's going to go in there. Now I can find it's it's binding, so it is definitely need to be cut and tapped. So that we'll wind that all the way through. And I don't see I don't know if you can see that, but there is definitely metal coming off of that. So hopefully. This axle will then go through that nice and easy. Again, another invaluable tool. A little set of little tap and die set. This goes up to 12 mil. Fortunately, I'd have been in trouble if it didn't. So now let's just see if we can wind that in. Feels better already. Needs a little bit of encouragement there. damage this that's fine so we'll put the thread locker on it now definitely gonna need to put definitely gonna need thread locker on these Stress they go through. Drying it off. Using my pliers just to give me some extra grip. That's it. That one's done. So we'll just see with the similar problems to this. Yep. All part of the joy and fun of working with metal. And I, I actually love it. Anybody that went to school in the 80s probably had to do a metalwork course. You'll be uh, in your element doing this. This definitely needs cleaning up. So, if you're going to be doing one of these, I would arm yourself with a little tap and die kit. Relatively inexpensive and hugely useful. I had to this had to come to my rescue when I was building the M26 as well if you haven't got one of these then you can use the vise um, if you've got you know jaw protectors or you know, soft grips inside the vise um, and it, sh it it'll do the same job but I've just I've decided to do this because I wasn't getting the uh, the results as quick as I wanted to without doing that for some reason these are really snug the other two that I did yesterday ahead of filming were fine with the lottery yeah that's fine so we'll just put some Loctite on that now don't let the pliers slip when you're grabbing that because you don't want to damage the axle
again, like I said before, you guys can fast forward this, but um, I've decided to film all six of these. Pop them on the bench because we know they're done. hope that we we get a good one nope I think we're just gonna have to commit the fact that they're all gonna have to be done but you know if this thing was straightforward and I've said many times before if this was like a big Meccano kit you, you wouldn't be the same you wouldn't get the same level of enjoyment out of it because it does test your skill and your patience and if you like invite you to learn new skills and let's face it we can all learn new skills it's really just a matter of putting your your mind to it and if you're a little bit onshore there is literally every um, every single tool and method of using a tool is available on YouTube uh, you know I just find YouTube so helpful for doing things like that especially if you're trying to do some basic maintenance on your car and you weren't really sure and the handbook isn't that clear or just simple electronics I've learned heaps heaps and heaps on YouTube by YouTubers that are a lot better than that than I am so feeling confident he applies the thread locker Sorry, this is taking a bit longer. That's going all right. That's good. And two more to do. So I think we'll just bite the bullet and accept that it's going to have to be tapped. It just seems to be the, the, the sort of back end of this that is where the problem is. But you know, this tool is doing its job, but this is definitely needing to be retapped. That is tough. Getting through it. It's starting to ease up now, there you go. I mean I would normally use a cutting compound if it's if it's if it's metal or steel. But um, this is aluminium, so I don't tend to need to use it, and it's, it can just be a bit of a messy job. I think I'm going to have to go through that another time. So what I'll do is I'll go on and I'll finish these and I'll come back to camera. So that's all eight of those completed. Uh, we're going to go on to do the wheels next. And you can see that it's here it is, a chunky old piece of aluminium, nicely made again by Armatech. Beautiful to hold, um, just needs to be cleaned up. Um, and effectively it's made of two parts. This little hubcap that's screw threaded on, like so. And then you have a bearing that goes one side and the other side, which they just glue in. Um, and then this just screws back on. Um, obviously, it'll all need to be cleaned up. But uh, And then you've just got some detailing parts. So it's literally just some dummy studs. And they give you 266. It should be enough. Um, they normally give you a little bit extra, especially with these parts. And then you simply lock tight and positioned and pop in. Don't you can see that there, like that. They'll go around that. So just a little detail. And then this is what I was talking about earlier. So this is the hubcap, and you do the same thing. You install these. Mind you, there we go. That's gone in. So that's it there. However, if I turn that upside down, 
don't know if you can see that that edge there will need to be cut off because that won't sit obviously if we sort of demonstrate that won't sit flush to the wheel that's just going to pop out It'll pop out any minute now let's just see yeah I'll zoom the camera in so you can see that it's starting to rise up I think the one in the middle will be fine so it's just this one that's going to need to be trimmed so the plan is to clean these wheels up glue all the studs in do them all and when they're nicely set I'll pop it back in the bag when they're nicely set see that's <laughs> classic I'll get that off in a minute um, when they're nicely set then get my Dremel out and we'll trim the back of those so that's going to be the next part of this build all right so we're going to now go on to the wheels I'll uh, just move these out of the way for now and bring this into center stage so we have the little hub cap as I said uh, already that just spins off and as you can see you've got a lot of the sort of the, just a the compound that needs to be cleaned off ahead of painting and applying any glue to this so we'll just give that a bit of a, a bit of a clean off now um, and yeah this is a one just a one big chunky wheel no real assembly required just the bearings and the hub cap so that's a relief and just get that all wiped over use a small screwdriver just to get into the areas that, and then we'll do the same where the bearing's going to go because we want that metal to be clean so you get a decent adhesion with the bearing and we'll do the same on the inside of that And that should be f that's that I'll just give this a, a wipe over on the face of it and the only thing I would say is these little dummy nuts uh, obviously we we're going to be gluing these and you now it's quite small so you want to make sure that you're not fiddling around trying to push that in the hole so I'm going to use a very small electrical screwdriver just to just clean that hole up so that it just makes life a little bit easier when we come to gluing these little studs in and then what we'll do we'll glue this first and then we'll go and do we'll glue these ones and then we'll leave them and when these are all set and I'm happy with that we'll go and do the get the Dremel out and we'll cut all the, the little legs off that's something that we'll probably have to just clamp them in my vise while I do that but I'm gonna the plan to, for the rest of this session is really just to do one of these wheels and in the next session we'll do the rest of them speed the whole process off and then get on to um, probably the drive case assembly so that's that I just want to make sure that they fit and they do fit in there nice no struggling right says that is that the one that got away yeah that's it yeah because we don't want to be messing around with glue and getting it on your fingers and everything else but I will arm myself with a pair of uh, tweezers just in case. I won't use them just initially. So I'm going to go, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will zoom the camera in and tilt down a bit. Excuse me while I do this. There we go. And move this into center, center position. And I'm just going to put that out of the way. 
and I'm just going to do a couple of these. I'm going to put a bit of glue around the hole. We'll do three to start with. Hopefully they then pop in. And don't worry about the excess glue because you can clean that off with a bit of acetone if it does become a problem. And they're going in there really nicely. What you don't want to do is be trying to force these things in um, and then you know you sort of make a mess of it. I'm just doing three at a time. It's up to you what you do. Oh, persevere with these. It actually sits perfectly if you just put that flat on the bench. And that fits perfectly. And I mean there's eight of these to do but um they'll soon they'll soon fly by. Again, I've got barrier cream on my hands, so if I do get any of the super glue on my skin, that will come off very easily because the barrier cream does an amazing job of just giving that little tiny little layer in between your skin so that, yeah, it's easy to remove. It um, seems like I'm a long way off the finish, but this part of the build is actually one of the most enjoyable parts, I think, because although you're building all these things away from the tank, you can see, you know, you can sort of in your mind, you can kind of draw a picture of how you think it's going to end up because you begin to see the components coming together. So it's very satisfying. Um, not sure how interesting this is to watch, but I'm filming it all in, in the hope that it is. Oh, classic. I think I missed another. Oh, I did miss a hole. Never mind, just reopen that up. The glue's on it still, so it should still work. And that's fine and then I think the only other one we need to do is this one on the top and again what I'll do is once the glue is set or in the process of setting actually I might just do that now just do a little bit of acetone on a bit of kitchen roll or paper towel whatever you prefer to call it I'll just go around and dab that. And all that does is just takes off the excess super glue. Yeah, so anything away from the contact surface is fine. So that's that. We'll leave that to one side. And now we'll go on and do the studs on the main wheel. So all these here same deal let's just pop a few onto that start with now as I said yesterday or sorry my last video um, not yesterday know what I'm saying there um, I really do appreciate you guys uh, following this all your amazing comments um, it's uh, quite humbling really I mean all I'm doing is just showing you my hobby um, and hopefully you know giving you an idea of how wonderful these kits are and what a great job that Armatech do in the production of these kits and um, I get a lot of people commenting on how expensive they are and but and you know yes they are but when you get these kits and you start to unpack them you really start to understand the the reason why there's you know a huge amount of research development and design and, and just the quality of everything they, they make 
you know, you, you soon realise why you're paying the money for it. And these things are built to last. Um, and some of these tanks that I've seen at some of the shows, you know, they're, 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 they're getting on in age, but they still look great. Um, and, you know, and even when you've painted them and, and you know, years, years ahead, they still look amazing. And that's a testament to the quality that Armatec and the pride and the, the you know the craftsmanship that Armatec put into these. So yes, they are expensive, um, but uh, you get you what you pay for. And I also like the fact that this is a UK-based company, um, made in the UK. Um, and the fact is that you can contact them if there's a problem, and they're they're normally very very helpful. Um, because they're you know they're passionate about what they do and they want you to they want you to be happy um, they want the customer to be you know happy with the decision they made so almost there with that how quick was that I mean I think the wheels that are built for the tiger took about just over an hour each I don't think it was far off that for the um, for the M26 either so that is it just pop those spare ones off out of the way for a minute. Nice and easy. And I'll just pop that on there so you can see. Be careful not to cross thread that. So that's it as a finished thing without the bearings in, of course. So we'll go on now and we'll pop the bearings in. So these bearings come and these are made, really well packed. Um, and these are just to double check these are the 6002 RS bearings you're gonna need um, two of these and I'm hoping that these go in just pop in so I'm going to test fit them to start with I think they're gonna be fine I think they're gonna be fine and then this one Yeah, that's fine. What I will do though on that one is I'll just take that edge off the back of that. Move the bearings out of the way. I'll just see if that pops in. It does. So just pop that back out so we can get glue on it. What I'll do is I'll get myself a wooden dowel for this. Excuse me. Just in case. And just see that that one goes in okay into that. I don't want to be I know I've used the mallet in the past. I don't like using the mallet, but um, what I also don't want to do is put the glue on it and then it sets and I can't get the thing into its final position. So I'm having a little bit of trouble with that one. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get the back one in. So we'll do the back one. So I'm just going to apply the glue around the edge like I've done before, just using a nozzle to spread that around. A thin layer of glue. And then hopefully just pop that in. And it's gone in there it's nice um, and while we're waiting for that to set we're just gonna see if that's gonna be a problem Let's see if I can get my deburring tool into that no not without danger in messing the uh, thread up I think that's gonna be right is it yeah that's gonna be fine So, sorry, I keep moving it out of the camera. So 
So I'm going to put some glue on this. Just again, just using a nozzle to spread the glue around. Don't want too much of this glue on here. Just enough to get that sort of all essential bond. That'll do. Try and drop it in square. Oh. I'm going to have people shouting at me saying don't wallop it but it does need a bit of an encouragement my trusty broom handle and that's it that's it both in both operating as they should we'll just pop this On one of the axles to see. Oh, that would help them if I put it the right way around. There you go. Just making sure that that. Sorry, I keep doing this. So just it's worth doing a bit of a test fit. Just pop the axle in. <laughs> Classic. There we go. Just to make sure that that spins as it should, and it does. So that is it. So we'll we'll leave that now um, because obviously now you probably see that now I'm going to have to clean up the the back edge of this with my Dremel um, just by taking the, the the sort of the 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 raised parts away so I can actually get that and screw it back in and up tight once the wheels have been secured onto the axles. So that is it. Um, I'm going to pack this away now um, and I'll just sort of do my final piece to camera so that's it for today's session it doesn't seem like we've achieved a lot but actually we have we've done all of the eight bogies uh, these are all assembled and ready for painting I'm just gonna have to mask those off and we built one of the wheels so uh, we built that in real time uh, so we understand now there's no learning curve or the learning curve is now done so in the next session what I'm going to probably do is hold off building the, the rest of these wheels until the next session. Um, I'll do all seven of the remaining wheels, but I'll get Ben to speed it all up with time lapse because it will be a bit tedious otherwise. Um, and also I want to leave enough time to do the drive case assembly, which I'm really looking forward to because it differs, um, not greatly, but it is different from the uh, what I've done previously on the M26 and the Tiger. Um, but in the interim, I'm probably going to get on and do some welding, uh, some mock welding on the lower section while it's in this state. And while I can get access to it, I'm just going to do a bit of research in my book to see where the weld joints would be. And I'll do that away from camera. Um, having said that, though, um, if you are new to my channel, thank you and welcome. Um, and you would like to see a session on welding, let me know in the comments because I'll be very happy to do a session on that because when we come to do the whole top there's plenty of opportunities to do welding and plenty plenty of need of welding on the top of the uh, the main tank so if you like if you'd like me to do that let me know and i'll do a whole session all about that um and so uh and, and again if you are new to my channel uh, welcome um thanks for joining me uh, please subscribe because uh, we've got a long way to go on this we've only just started building the Hetzer and I have previously built the late variant Tiger and the M26 Persian and they're both on my playlist uh, as well as I've built a bridge um, and I've got lots more in the pipeline um, that I'm planning um, and so I just wanted to say if you like this video please thumbs up and um, and I'll sign off by saying thank you for joining me thanks for all your support thanks for all your comments um, I'm Tony, I love building these tanks and I'll see you in the next session.